Welcome to the Off Grid Podcast, powered by Retreat Caravans. Join us as we dive into the incredible stories of caravanners who've embraced the open road and the off grid lifestyle. Welcome to the Off Grid Podcast. Today, obviously, for those that don't know, my name's Tilly and I work with Retreat Caravans. Retreat Caravans, of course, does power up our Off Grid Podcast. To the right of me here, I've got Jody and Brett, who are Retreat Caravans owners, and more importantly, they are Off Grid Specialists. Jody, Brett, welcome to the Off Grid Podcast. Please tell us and our massive audience that we've got in front of us here a little bit about you guys and uh, your caravanning journey to begin with. We'll get into the crux of it all very shortly, but tell us a little bit about yourselves. Thanks, Tilly. Um, so we started off caravanning only just shortly, like recently, sorry, about 18 months ago. Um, and we first started out by renting a caravan just to get the feel of it before we went and purchased our retreat caravan. And the reason we're caravanning is we sold our business 12, 18 months ago. When we put our business up for sale, we started looking for a van. Um, because we got a custom-made van from Retreat, it took 15 months to get it manufactured. Uh, hence why we just started recently caravanning. Well, that all sounds pretty uh, normal in today's climate, waiting 15 months to get a caravan. Times are coming down now. As a, as a manufacturer, we've gone through the, what we call the COVID boom, and uh, people are starting to get their caravans now from order about 9 to 12 months away. Now, you said you've got your caravan. What type of caravan do you have? And I guess, how is it set up for off-gridding? So we have a 22-foot-6 Fraser. Um, we got our electrical side of the van specced right up heaps and heaps so we could go off grid. Um, we, we put extra battery, so we've got two 225 lithiums, so 450 in total. We've got, I think, 650 of solar and we've got a 3000 inverter all through Red Arc, which is more than double what the standard van would come. So, yeah, we're geared up to go. All right, so just to recap that, so you've got three solar panels, which I think equate to 600-odd uh, watts, yes. right? You've got 225-amp-hour lithium batteries times two, yes. and you've got a 3,000-watt red arc inverter. Yes. Now, some of the things that you guys power up on that off-grid, what would they be, Jody? Well, the big one's the coffee machine, of course. Um, yeah, so it just powers everything. You've, you've got no problems. You can do the air fryer. We can cook. Um, yeah, as I said, the coffee's a blessing because I have two or three a day, which I probably shouldn't, but um, things like that, a hair dryer, um, I've used my hair roller, like I never have a worry that I can't do what I want to do when I'm off grid, so that I love, it's excellent. I said that to Brett when we first got the van, I said, I've tented all my life, please make sure it's glamper vanning <laughs> rather than like tenting, and it is and it's more, it's, it's, it's the best, it's a house on wheels. Well, I guess now it actually can be a house on wheels because that terminology, having a you know a house on wheels in the past, was very restrictive. You know, having an inverter, having a massive battery power bank with you, and obviously retopping that up with the solar panels allows that to happen. Now you've you've got a few kids, right? Two, Two kids. I reckon you've got three. Who's Frankie? <laughs> Frankie's our Fraser. Frankie's our caravan, and some uh, very clever man um, come up with that name. And um, yeah, so. Frankie's our little baby, he's our number three, or she's our number three. It's a girl, it's a girl, Tilly, it's not a boy. Identifies as a caravan, a really nice one, so yeah. All right, now you're, you're pulling a 22 foot six caravan with clearly a lot of uh, fruit on it. Um, Brett, I'm going to pass this one over to you. What, what kind of car tows a caravan that probably weighs about 2,800 kilos empty, right? I'm not sure how much you fill it up, but let us know. A lot? Okay. So tell us a little bit about the car and caravan setup. And I guess for anyone who's looking at going off grid, because we're going to get to where you've been, but the setup of it, right? How do you guys set up? And I guess what are you pulling with? I've got a Datsun 120YU. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, we've got a, um, a brand new Nissan Patrol, um, obviously the V8 one. Um, Y62? Y62, correct. Um, about like thirty thousand dollars on the upgrades from the actual standard car, GVM upgrade, four point two ton, um, 
airbag rear suspension. Oh, it is. You've got to have all this to, to, to tow the van properly. I've got a lot of cosmetic stuff like, you know, rear and front razzler bars with nicer wheels. That's all optional, but yeah, razzle dazzle. Um, you know, you've got building compressors, just all the good stuff. So, yeah, and it tows it good. It took a total of 12 weeks, right? So you went to the Gold Coast, you cut through the middle, you went to the Big Red Bash in, in Birdsville, and you stayed in that area for approximately how long? Nine days straight, right? And you were using your coffee machine three times a day, right? Did you run the air con on uh, whilst you were there? No, the heater. The heater, okay. It wasn't warm. It wasn't warm, okay. That's surprising. Yeah, no, it's freezing. Yep, but you managed to use your heater on as you went, right? Um, cooking facilities, obviously you had your air fryer. So you, you literally are glamping it in style. As you guys mentioned that you just retired, you got your new caravan, you got your new car. Was the dream actually to do a big trip like that? Or have you got, have you got more plans coming? Yeah, that was always our dream and our goal to do big long trips. Uh, the kids are not kids anymore, they're all adults, so we can go off for times like two, three, four, five months at a time. Um, and the next one we've got coming up planned is we're going to go up to the Cape. I think so, East Coast again, but we're going to go inland. And Brett will be able to give you some more information of the exact route, but I've done it on um, Wikicam, so I've sort of mapped it out. And we're going to test it really out by free camping 80% of the way. And we've sort of already started mapping that out, haven't we? The free camps all the way, see how far we can get before we sort of need to re... We can obviously stock with water and things like that um, and really test out our ability to do that and do it comfortably. So you can sort of extend from the Cape York. Well, the trip we just did, we probably spent two-thirds of it in caravan parks and one-third off-grid because it was our first big trip. So, so now we know what we know. Like Jody said, we, we've planned the from Melbourne to the Cape, the, the locations, all the way off grid, no caravan parks. And we, she said we're just gonna see how far we can go before we have to book a caravan park. Uh, next June, yeah. Yeah, because you're limited for time up there. There's only four months of the year you can do it. So um, yeah, then we get to the Cape and then virtually come back down the East Coast again. And then the following year we're going west for seven months. So. Listen, in your trip, right, you're going to go in June and you're going to stay there for how long? We're going to spend a month to get to the Cape. Yep. A month in the Cape and a month coming home. Perfect. So in September, you know you've got to make yourself available because Retreat Caravans is having a rally in September in Tail and Bend in South Australia. So all of our caravans, for those that uh, have bought a caravan before, you know, every manufacturer generally has a, a, like an owner's group and they set up little rallies or musters or whatever it might be. We've been doing ours now for probably about six or seven years. So uh, it's basically a good week away, bit of, uh, bit of fun, bit of activities, get to meet new friends. And, you know, us personally at Retreat Caravans, we, we, um, we do it in line with raising money. So we raise money for the council council. So up until now, I think in total from our six rallies, we've raised nearly sixty to seventy thousand dollars, and all that money's gotten to the council council of uh, whether it be New South Wales, whichever state we're in, we basically donate it to them. So make sure you keep that free, okay? We'll definitely be here in September because on this trip we just did, we made sure we were back for, for September for the footy finals. You see, uh, we're not talking footy this year, <laughs> so we're Geelong supporters. So um, yeah, we're. We're definitely back. We'll be, we try and plan our trips to be home in September. So that's our go. Yeah. Well, listen, you know, the word rebuild has been banded around a few times, but, you know. Um, now, guys, you've been on a fantastic trip, right? And for those people that don't know you, you post a lot of stuff on social media, right? Now, I believe on Instagram you go by the handle of Retired Road Trippers AU. Is that right? Now, I want to know, because there's some pretty funky stuff on there. And I know when we first met, you said, I'm going to I'm gonna set up a YouTube channel. I'm going to set up Instagram. I can't wait to start learning how to do it. You've gone from, from down here to up here in, in, in working it out. It's been really, really good. I want to know who's behind it and how much research you learn on reels and stories and that sort of stuff. And, you know, the experience you've done documenting your journey, because that's really all it is. Well, that's all, Brett. <laughs> No, it's me, um, and I'm self-taught. Um, as I said, we were in business for 30, 40 years together, so I sort of self-taught over those years how to do um, Instagram posts. I kept up with what was the latest and how to post, and um, yeah, basically I just I just watched what other people were doing, um, and then just had to play myself and just and just uploaded it, and it just seemed to just 
people were interested and we love to share our journey so people can enjoy the same sort of things and experiences and things like that so yeah it's just all self-taught and I love to do it he hates it because I'm like do that again or smile at again or exactly <laughs> shit loads <laughs> but it's fun it's part of the trip and I love to and I also love to document for our own personal you know to look back on like I've watched our trip so many nine session or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah telly <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so no, I love it and all self-taught and um, yeah, I just love to document and keep it for ourselves as well. Yeah, cool. Well, that's all it's all about, right? Because caravanning, it's not a hobby, it's a lifestyle and the best way to document that is obviously back in the day you would have had a camcorder but now nowadays Instagram keeps everything on there permanently or a photo album as well. So the big trip's planned for June next year. You've got lots to do. You're going to do a complete off-grid trip this time around. So for anyone who's out here at the caravan show today looking for their very first caravan or upgrading their caravan, what are some of the key criteria that they should be looking at after being on this 12-week trip that you've just done? We'll get a couple from both. Wow, okay, I'm going to think about it. I'll pass that to Brett. So my, my, mine is all the electrical side of things. I was, when we bought this van, to me, that was just a no-brainer. Since we've been caravanning, I cannot believe how many vans are out there, and I'm talking new vans, who have just like, you meet people in caravan parks, and I tell them what we're running, and they go, oh, we've only got an 800 inverter. And I'm thinking, how do you run? Oh, we can't use our microwave. And I'm thinking, that's just, an old, just stuff like that I didn't realise. I thought every van had all this stuff, you know what I mean? So that, to me, is a must. All the electricals have got to be upgraded. Um, I don't know how you could have a van without it, to be honest. The height, we again thought it was just normal to ask for that, but it's not. Not everybody has the extra height. I'm quite a tall person. And um, when we were going through all the vans at these shows that we've been going to, I, was hit, I had a hat on and I was hitting everything, the top of the door, the air conditioner, everything I was hitting with my head. And I said to Brett, do you reckon we could go a bit higher? We asked retreat and they said, yeah, well, they could do, was it the 100 mil? And so we did it and it was barely any extra cost and it's been the best thing and all our tall friends come into our van and like oh wow this is so it makes it spacious it makes it like homely and yeah it's just something that we just thought was normal to us but a lot of people don't have it and i love that so, so perfect well i guess the, you know the the interior designer and you know the electrical minded people you know listen to that um i know we've got a few people in the uh, in the crowd today is there any questions you want to ask these guys on the trip that they've had just in case you know like you're planning any trips or anything like that generally there's loads of room but if you've got, um, yeah, wiki camps is excellent. And look at the reviews and see what people have written because there are those time slots. I've seen them in there, but I wouldn't say you've got to panic and get there by two. No, you should be fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But just keep up to date on the wiki camp because look at the, the most recent review and it will tell you, I, I guess. Yeah, it's a fantastic app. Cool. Yes, sir. I might answer that for you, Brett, right? So on average, right, when you're upgrading to an inverter, it's not just upgrading to an inverter. Uh, you, in, to, to run an air conditioner, you need to have enough battery power to not only run the air conditioner, but then all the other appliances that you've got in your caravan. So when you're upgrading your electrical system, you're generally adding a solar panel, you're adding an extra battery, and then you're also adding a 3,000 watt inverter. Now, inverters, obviously, you can buy many different brands. Uh, with us at Retreat, generally we, we, we would use a Red Arc system. Now, a retail price to have that put into your caravan as an add-on is anywhere between sort of seven to, to 10,000, depending on what the caravan comes with to begin with. So the van that these guys got, Frankie the Fraser, actually comes standard with a 225 amp hour lithium battery. So that's why it only cost them about seven odd thousand dollars. Had they had the AGM uh, battery package beforehand and they had to upgrade to two lithiums instead of the one, it would have been slightly more. Because when we went away, it was winter, so it wasn't that hot that we had to really use the air conditioning that much. So I couldn't really answer that question. We were using the heater more than the air conditioning. So if that would would that run the same amount of power? Uh, the heater would generally run not as much power. Not as much. Okay, we'll put it this way: if we were run, we could run the heater for six. And I'm, I'm not talking diesel heat; I'm talking the heater in the air conditioning heater. We could run that for six hours. 
Um, and a, the bat from, if your battery was 100%, six hours, you'd probably get down to about 55% battery. Yeah. And then, yeah. Um, I just wanted to add also, so once you do heat the van, it stays heated. Like it just, it didn't go cold again. You have to put it back on 10 minutes later. It stays quite warm. And in the warmer areas that we were sort of like when we went out to Airlie and things like that, um, the van stayed quite cool without having to put the aircon on. Just open up a window and have the fresh air. And yeah, so the RXP, have I got that right? Which is the insulation that the retreat company use in their caravans, which is brilliant. I loved it. Just to, to touch on what Jody was saying, so again, different manufacturers have got some advanced uh, manufacturing techniques with their wall and roof constructions. Speaking for ourselves at Retreat, so we use something called the RXP wall construction where it's insulated by our wall. So the, the 30 mil thick composite roof that we've got, which is a one piece roof and it goes all the way from the back of your van all the way to your front, complemented by the 30 mil thick composite walls as well. So you've got insulation across the whole platform of the caravan. So as they said before, when it's, when it's cold outside and you turn the heater on, the warm stays around longer. And when it's, when it's warm outside and it's, you, know, you get run the, run the air conditioner, the cool stays in the caravan a lot longer as well. So it's, it's a holistic approach to making sure that your caravan experience is a lot better off for off-gridding or just for the weekend, you know, wherever it might be. Thank you for that. Yes, sir. I might repeat this one. So the gentleman's going for his first caravanning uh, mission soon in January, did you say? Yep, he's never towed before, um, but he wants the tips just to not to kill the little bloke here on the left and the rest of his family. Right, I'll pass this one over to you, Brett, first, because I think he's going to need a bit of instructions. Drive very carefully. <laughs> stick, to, stick under the speed limits. Um, I don't know. I've never happened to me yet. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't have a backup generator either. Um, well, we just load it to what we think's right. We, I, like you said, I do even the weighed out the best I can. I've never had, like, you know, you get these guys, who, you can get your van professionally weighed, and they, we've never had any of that done. Yeah. Um, I just it's use... Be a bit down when you're yeah. Towing, not completely down. yeah, correct, yeah. So um, having the airbag suspension in me, in me patrol too, I can adjust the airbag so that it sits perfectly in the right position. Do you recommend that for people who are getting caravans for the first time, their airbags in their car? Yeah, I do. Rear airbags, yeah. Yep, yeah, just push a button. Well, in mine, I just push a, a fob on me key, key ring. So if your full weight on your caravan is quite heavy, you can raise the airbags on the back of the car. Lift the back up, yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if anyone's got any other questions. If they don't, I just wanted to say once again, thank you very much for joining us on the Off Grid Podcast. And once again, if anyone wants to follow your journey on Instagram, please let these guys know what your handle is on Instagram. We'll probably get this recording and put it on our Facebook and uh, Instagram channels and type it in. But for those that are watching live, because I think this is being live streamed, Jody, I know you're the Instagram queen, so take it away. <laughs> Thanks for the compliment. Um, it's Retired Road Trippers with an S-A-U. So Retired... Road Trippers AU. Perfect. Thank you very much, Brett. Thank you very much, Jody. Thank you for the round of applause. It's a golf clap, but it'll do. And uh, enjoy your trip in June next year. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Off Grid Podcast. If you're passionate about off grid adventures and have a unique story, we'd love to have you on as a guest. Connect with us to share your experiences and inspire others with your off grid journey. Remember, Life is an adventure meant to be lived off the grid. Don't forget to subscribe for more inspiring stories, helpful tips and exciting adventures. This is the Off Grid Podcast powered by Retreat Caravans.